These trackers are only $30 a pop and don't require base stations. Affordable full body tracking is finally here. My name is Fia and this is Slime VR. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Virtual Reality Show, where we talk about any and all things related to virtual reality inside virtual reality. Ever since I got my hands on Slime VR, you guys have been pestering me for review. Well, after about 10 days of trying to get them to work, I finally did it, and I'm ready to share with you my thoughts, and the results were interesting to say the least. Also, make sure to check if you've hit the subscribe button. It's the best way to support my channel and help me make more videos about your tech just like this one. So Slime Viewer is a wireless 360 degree solution to full body tracking that eliminates the need for base stations by using a Wi-Fi connection to your computer. It's fully open source and open hardware, meaning for all you tinkerers out there, you can create them yourself for even cheaper than the already low price. Sounds pretty good, right? But like all good things, it comes at a cost. Now, keep in mind, the set of trackers I've received along with the software that accompanies them are still very early in development and are subject to change. I had to unfortunately help with a lot of testing during my experience because there were some times where these things were just plain not working. Like I mentioned, it took me over a week to finally get these things even functional with my setup by working tightly back and forth with the creator to nail out the kinks. I was sent eight trackers to strap to my body that take the place of three Vive trackers in games like VRChat. Now, if that seems like a lot of trackers, well, you're right, but these things are so small that it really wasn't that big of a deal. Now, a base set of trackers is actually composed of five to get the three-point tracking. However, the creator Aaron attached three smaller trackers to the feet and chest to improve the quality of tracking overall by adding foot rotation and pose precision. You can see here on my set that the smaller attached trackers are just connected by wires because it was thrown on at the last minute to improve my experience. However, while all these smaller trackers will still be attached in the final product, they will come with nice little cases, all of which will be injection molded. The way they track is by using IMU motion sensors that connect to your PC over Wi-Fi. As long as you are using PC VR, they will work, which includes using a Quest connected by link cable. And I know a lot of you are watching as Quest users because they make up 36% of Steam VR users as a whole. And with that in mind, I actually want to take an extra minute out to talk to you about a Quest exclusive experience that I think is pretty awesome. Madrid Noir is a 45-minute VR film that takes place in Spain's beautiful capital city, which contains a captivating story about a young girl, her puppy, and her mysterious uncle. We meet our protagonist Lola while helping her clean out a cluttered apartment that once belonged to her uncle, who is now presumed dead. Digging around the apartment stirs some old memories of when she once lived with him, and that's when our story really begins. Bringing in touches of classic film noir to meet Pixar quality animation is an absolute delight as we uncover the mysterious past of Lola's uncle. What's so cool about this film is not only the mystery adventure itself, but the way you're able to interact with the world, capturing the true essence of immersive storytelling. There's not a lot of things out like this right now, and anyone who considers themselves a fan of VR really needs to check out experiences like this that are pushing virtual reality forward through imaginative creativity. You literally make full use of virtual reality space as the story guides your eyes through the different scenes. I absolutely loved being in the depths of the city and using my own flashlight to uncover what's going on myself. It was the perfect balance of being relaxed enough that I could chill out and enjoy the story while also keeping myself super engaged in what was actually going on. I was genuinely invested in the characters and wanted to find out for myself what was really going on here. Everything from the atmospheric moodiness to the characters themselves charmed me. Oh, and also, they nailed the music. If you have a Quest or Quest 2, you really gotta go check out Madrid Noir. And it's only like 9 bucks, which is in my opinion absolutely worth it and probably more fun than going to a movie theater for a 2D film anyways. 
Back to Slime VR. The current setup goes like this. You download a driver for Steam VR, a USB driver, and the Slime VR server that actually connects to the trackers. The trackers run on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, not 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. So that's a big thing you'll have to know going into this that gave me a huge amount of trouble. Because my computer is connected by Ethernet to my main Wi-Fi that automatically switches between 2.5 and 5 gigahertz, I ended up having to invest in a Wi-Fi dongle from Amazon. I ended up purchasing a TP-Link one for only like $17. I then went into my computer's Wi-Fi settings to set it up as a hotspot that I use only for Slime VR. Then I went into the server and connected each tracker to USB one by one to connect it with the hotspot. Once they were all connected, I had to assign a tracking position and direction to each one. The server itself is a bit buggy still, but overall went pretty smoothly once I knew what I was doing. Then because I had the Slime VR driver installed in Steam VR, I was able to locate them in the Vive Tracker Manager and assign their main positions. After gearing up and strapping into the trackers, I opened a desktop and clicked on the giant reset button to set my position. It didn't really work off the bat and there was a lot of options where I could change my body proportions. The only two I was told to touch were the waist and leg length. I adjusted those until the trackers and Steam VR matched the relative positions of where they should be in real life. A little tedious, but hey, it works. So once I got into VR chat to test them, it felt a little different, but overall actually looked pretty good. I had a nice long Friday night session where I tested them out in different avatars, worlds, and positions. I found just walking around there wasn't a big difference between these and my vibe trackers. However, where these things really shined was in my laying down positions. I have this giant beanbag I bought for my previous video about sleeping in VR and Man, is that thing comfortable. I like to lay down on it and normally my vibe tracker starts spazzing out a bit because of the base stations having trouble seeing them. But in Slime VR, they were near perfect no matter what direction I folded up into because there's no need for base stations, so you can even cover them with things like blankets. Now after playing with them for a while, I noticed two big problems, freezing and drift. The freezing would randomly occur when my tracking would start to lag for like 20 seconds at a time. This was super occasional, but it did happen multiple times during my few hour play session. I'm thinking this might have had to do with my Wi-Fi connection, but uh, that's just a guess on my part. The drift was also quite noticeable, and I had to reset my calibration quite often during my play session. It's definitely just not as smooth as regular Vive trackers. I will say though, the battery life on these things are amazing. Coming to a full 10 hours of life, meaning you can be in VR for quite some time and never even worry about needing the charge. The price for these are subject to change, but for a full set of eight like I have, it's going to be somewhere around $250, but could be as low as $200 depending on where Aaron is able to move production. For the basic five set, you're looking at somewhere between $140 to $180, which is even more budget. The standard and full body tracking right now is three Vive trackers and two base stations, which totals to about $690 if you don't have any base stations already. Ready. This is like a third of that price, which is insane. The pre-order should open up here in August, but if you want to stay up to date, you can check out their crowd supply page or join their Discord, which I will link in the description. So my final verdict, should you buy Slime VR? Well, if you're on a really tight budget, then yeah, this could be for you. However, the low cost does come at a price. Less accurate tracking and insanely complicated and repetitive setup that makes the whole thing an absolute pain every single time you want to play. But if you have more time than money, I can say that with a little polishing, this has the potential to bring full body tracking to way more people than ever before. Definitely comment below your thoughts on Slime VR and whether or not you'll be trying out for yourself. I'm curious to hear everyone's opinions on it as it comes out because it's definitely a hot topic in the VR scene right now. If you want to support me making videos just like this, then please consider joining my Patreon. It directly allows me to have time to even do this stuff. I'm going to be going live on Twitch right after this video uploads, so also join me there and we can chat as well. Anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've been your host, Fia, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Special thanks to this month's Patreon members and virtual VIPs, Dude Tech. Klukulay, 
Mr. Cheerio, Score Maller. <laughs>